for the all, for me, it's the living. The living meaning including non-human species because I, I really think that what we do as architects is impacting often negatively other species obviously and, and so when I talk about sustainability with everyone when we talk about it inside our office we think of it as you know these spheres of influence from the very first one which is yourself how do you be your best you know person then then how do we work with our families our communities our communities including architecture and then it gets to you know the whole planet so it's like you know we're, things that we try to do use design to highlight problems like in the oceans or a couple of years ago we just finished this uh, exhibition called Balinopolis which is about the societies that whales form and you know their challenges so you know I think design can help lend like communication to all of these different living creatures that we share the planet with. Our site in Memphis along the Mississippi River is really, it's a man-made site built by the Army Corps of Engineers to prevent flooding. So a, a lot of that land is just, wasn't alive at all and it's kind of blocked off from the river. And though they needed to maintain that flood protection, part of it was actually broken down at one end of it on the south end. And that's where all the life was, all the biodiversity was down where this wall and the river was gone. And so what we did with that project is start with what's there, like instead of repairing that wall, just leave it unrepaired and, and build something that's perched above it so that people can, you know, kind of notice this biodiversity that exists. And Memphis is on the Mississippi Flyway for um, migration of birds that come very long way all the way from South America and they go all the way <laughs> up to the north. So this is a great place to kind of experience uh, species that you wouldn't normally see. So, so that's a way to touch with these other species in that particular site. That's a great question and because architecture normally it doesn't move at all, it's just there. But I think it's a desire to embody some of the living qualities that you get in natural systems. And so if it can respond to that, then there's a dialogue. So in like a building like the solar carve tower, you know, we're looking at tracking these positions of the sun and, and trying to let the sun hit the ground where people are and making the building get out of the way. So it's kind of like responding to it in a way that steps back so that the sun can reach the ground. But other times it's really about variety, I think, and order. That That's something that's a quality in nature too. It's like in the Mira Tower, for example, it's providing variety, different light and different views. But there's still an order to it that makes sense for the constructability, but there's also those orders in, in nature that we can find. It's not just chaos everywhere. <laughs> and so tapping into those things, that's what I, I love the most about those kind of systems. My purpose, our purpose as architects is to stay idealist. I mean, reach for those things that are gonna be beneficial and for people and for everyone, but do things, actions, at least this is where I'm coming from. I want to see progress. I want to make projects on the world, to quote Sartre. <laughs> I want to make projects that will, that will somehow improve the situation toward this city that we want to have in the future, to the future that we, we want to see happen.